Hello everyone, thank you for being here today. So I wish I was able to be in the room today and meet all of you to discuss 5G and ARM. Unfortunately, we'll have to do it remotely or virtually once again, but this is for everyone's safety. So today we're gonna to discuss how we can run 5G networks on ARM-based server, leveraging Red Hat OpenShift. My name is Alex Hidotalouet, and I'm a telco solution architect serving communication service providers here in Canada. Before driving the private 5G evolution into the industrial revolution, we need to understand the use cases. So I've outlined here three types of use cases that are fairly familiar probably to the audience. The first one is oil and gas. So the ability to provide autonomous haulage or remote equipment control or finally, visual fire safety will definitely enable a more efficient exploration of mines, a better and increased productivity, and an improved safety of the people working there. On the automotive industry, the idea is to leverage private 5G to help with test track autonomous R&D and of course, in vehicle communication or vehicle to anything type of app communication. The goal there is really to reduce the time time, increase productivity, longer asset life cycle. And finally, on the agriculture side, the goal is really to foster smart farming, enable environment monitoring and data collection of that environment. That will help increase yield, reduce disease, improve food safety, of course, and lower the environment impact. At Red Hat, we're working with a lot of partners, whether they are vendor equipment supplier for network functions, whether they are software suppliers for OSS, BSS, or even security suppliers. We also are working with partners to integrate third-party solution into our platform, and of course, to work all of the above. So this slide presents a 10,000 feet view map of all the partners we're working with on per domain basis. And of course, the intention is that these partners are working towards getting validated or certified on our common platform so that customers can leverage Red Hat to provide hybrid cloud capabilities horizontally across their infrastructure and their company. So at high level today, what we're here to discuss is really private 5G or 5G, I should say, running on an ARM server. So this is the high level architecture of what we've deployed or what we're trying to or aiming at deploying in our lab. So the baseline is a gigabyte server, a Mt. Jade server. We'll get to the spec of that server in a minute. It's provided with an ultra CPU that has 80 core per socket, two sockets. On top of that, our intention is to run Red Hat OpenShift, which will um, uh, support the software application that are the CU, the DU, and of course, the core itself. And the idea is to have also in our lab, the Benetel RU that will be connected to our DU. So if we look a little bit more into the setup, we have that Gigabyte server, our Mont Jane server system, as I explained a minute ago, it provides the Ampere Ultra processor, the Neoverse N1. One socket provides 80 core, and we have two of these. In terms of RAM, the server is need, needed to be a little bit beefed up with 250 gig of RAM. The intention is that, as I explained before, we need to run quite a number of software on it to provide the full 5G stack, both RAM and core. And of course, the NIC card, in, in this case, our, our goal is to use the Intel or Columbiaville card, the EA10. On the right hand side, this is the antenna that we will leverage, the Benetel. It provides a lot of capabilities. And most importantly, what we're going to leverage is the 100 megahertz bandwidth for 5G. Before diving deeper into ARM and OpenShift and the environment, that's the 10,000 feet view architecture 
of the platform. So it sits at the very bottom across any type of environment. So providing complete flexibility of where you want to deploy. The, the first layer is of course the OS. So our well-known RHEL or Red Hat Enterprise Linux, we have core OS. So it's a stripped down immutable OS on top of which we provide Kubernetes and all the cluster services that enables for common use cases such as deployment, service assurance, and of course, um, application development if need be. But what is more critical and more important to discuss today is the day one and day two services that you see layered on top. The day one again is to complement that uh, service assurance capability by providing some alert capabilities or monitoring capabilities, of course, logging, integrate, and, and the intention always is to integrate with your enterprise system that exists already and not to reinvent the wheel. And on day two, this is really where we're trying to enable bare metal consumption based on, or through, I should say, software abstraction. So in OpenShift, everything we do is driven by what we call an operator. And so if you need to set up SRIOV, if you need to set up GPU or FPGA, if you need to set up SCTP or Performance Time Protocol, PTP, all these requirements for a 5G stack are elements that you would be able to configure in your um, hardware through OpenShift abstraction declaratively. The intention is you can repeat that deployment over and over, and you can keep that source of truth stored in the Git repo. So you can always check, okay, what is it that I have deployed in that specific environment? What are the specific huge pages configuration for that node, et cetera, et cetera. So the architecture is meant to be very modular and again, abstract as much as possible the hardware capabilities so you can manage them declaratively. Now, let's talk about deploying OpenShift on ARM. That has never been so easy with our online cloud.redhat.com console. As you can see, the screenshot just show our new, or it's not exactly new, it's been there a couple of months now, but this is the assisted installer workflow where you can deploy through the browser your cluster whether it's connected um, or disconnected. And the intention is that everything has been made super easy to deploy that cluster. Of course, there are a couple of prerequisites, such as providing a base domain. There are a couple of um, requirements that needs to be fulfilled in terms of DNS resolution and DHCP. I won't go over all these things now, but assuming you know about them, all you need to do to deploy an ARM is click that small checkbox, use ARM64 CPU architecture, and the installer will automatically know that it needs to deploy an ARM-based system. That installation method, to conclude on it, given that it's a SaaS, it's driven through UI, it provides a lot of capabilities to do validation of inputs that you'll do. You will validate that the connectivity that you supply is working actually in your environment and so on and so forth. So I touched based a little bit on this a minute ago. Our intention in our current lab, so to deploy the whole stack, the reference architecture that I've showcased a couple of minutes back, it's to leverage GitOps methodology. GitOps methodology is aiming to do everything as code. So all the code, all the manifests are stored in Git. You treat everything as code as I just explained. And then there are processes or engine that will keep reconcile that source of truth or that state that is held in Git into the environment. And so specifically for our use case here, our goal is to have Helm chart to deploy both the core, the 5G core service-based architecture, the RAN for the L1 and the RAN L2, L3, because this will be separate vendor 
in our labs. And finally, all the deployment capabilities like memory allocation, multi-use networks, so this is about whether you need Mac VLAN networks or whether you need SRIOV networks, et cetera, so on and so forth. So all the things on the side, whether it's application specific deployment manifest or descriptors, or whether it's the platform configuration leveraging this higher level abstraction on the hardware that I talked a minute ago, all these things will be done as code and will be configured leveraging that GitOps methodology. As part of the environment, once it is deployed, OpenShift provides monitoring capability. This is a quick screenshot just to express the CPU utilization on that specific um, ARM-based system that we discussed before. At this point, it's empty. The CPU utilization you're seeing is just the footprint of OpenShift itself. That telemetry can be used down the road to allocate, uh, to assess, sorry, how much a specific application is consuming. And this is exactly what we'll use once we've deployed our 5G core stack, the RAN stack, and then have traffic running through the stack. So this built-in dashboard will allow us to monitor on a constant basis how we perform. This is very important because one of the reasons we want to leverage ARM actually to deploy 5G stacks on it, it's because of its capability to provide more horsepower at a lower energy footprint, and of course, more condensed. And this fits very well the various use cases we discussed before that are more at the edge, so don't have as many capabilities or power as a regional data center. So this is a screenshot just showing that, again, the idle running server, we're able to go and fetch some metrics for power consumption and temperature. This is what I'm currently showing the screen. The yellow line, this is a temperature we're averaging at 54 um, Celsius degrees. And the power consumption for the server idle or running at 6% CPU consumption is 32 watt. Um, so this is like this is not a lot. It's very low at this point in time, but of course the server isn't doing anything. So it's expected. Again, the intention here is to showcase that as soon as we're going to load the cluster with these applications, we're going to be able to understand how they're consuming the underlying hardware and their impact in terms of energy efficiency and CPU consumption. This is a quick run that we've done with our current setup. Again, empty. It's just throwing a gig um, of traffic ingress in the cluster just to assess uh, the current impact on load and temperature. Well, we can argue a gig is really not a lot. Um, our, our current setup is, is, is still getting um, deployed and it's still evolving. This is the capability of our fabric, the one gig. It's, it's, it's changing soon. Um, you may have understood that from now, but all I'm explaining right now is the work and the partnership that we're having with ARM and a couple of other software vendors to provide that private 5G on ARM. We haven't finalized completely um, that proof of concept. We're working towards it. And all the bits and bytes that I'm sharing today is really to provide you with an update on where we are and where we're going. So as we were saying, when we hit the one gig traffic, you know, it's barely noticeable in terms of load and temperature. The spikes in load that you see there are mainly the things that the server is doing on a regular basis maybe a little bit of spike when we had a sustained one gig throughput for five minutes. But beside that, you can see there is no temperature effect, but obviously the load isn't getting very high, so that's expected. Now, 
One last aspect is that Red Hat provides the tool and technologies to drive automated manufacturing, refine robotics, improve product design using data analytics, and enable Industry 4.0. With Red Hat OpenShift, our broader portfolio and ecosystem of technology partner, we really want to strive to enable automotive original equipment manufacturer, OEM, whether tier one, tier two suppliers, to transform their infrastructure and strategically modernize their application and operation in support of new business requirements. This is really the opportunity that Industry 4.0 provides toward automated data-centric operations. We strongly believe that the combination of Red Hat OpenShift and ARM provide a simplified deployment and lifecycle management, I should say, um, of these AI power intelligence application at the edge, okay? So when you need to do the inference on these, for instance, on that example, in the manufacturing plants, whether you're completely isolated or whether you're connected back to the core data center, the idea is that you can process the data through that program logic controller that exists. So it will receive all the data from the sensor. And then we will, with the machine learning inference systems, being able to process that data and eventually send it back to the core data center or backhaul the resulting of that inference. So we do reduce that bandwidth or that capacity footprint. And so the intention is whether these are sensor on a mine, whether these are sensor in a, um, uh, um, a factory, the idea is that it can be distributed. It can run on a system that doesn't require too many uh, um, power, that doesn't require you know, full bone rack. It can be minimalized thanks to the efficiency of ARM systems. And so we strongly believe that allows you to turn quickly insight into positive business outcome. So in a nutshell, I just wanted to recap in terms of the open hybrid cloud platform that we provide. It's really based on any type of infrastructure, whether it's virtual, physical, at the edge in the public or in your own cloud. On top, we aim to provide Linux, then all the Kubernetes standard services. And finally, everything that OpenShift has to offer from a platform, application, data, and developer services. And as you scale, <coughs> so sorry, as you adopt more the distributed type of architecture that we've just seen with Industry 4.0, as you start harvesting RAN and deploy OpenShift cluster with RAN component in it throughout your fleet of antennas, this is where the last layer, the top layer, becomes very critical. This is what will allow you to harvest these fleets of environments and to control them as one, to control them as um, cattle and not pet. The intention is really to swivel chair from managing these environments one by one and rather now manage them in bulk, whether it's the life cycle management of these environments, the life cycle management of the application within the environments, or the configuration of the environments, whether it's the SRIO, VD, PDK, VF that you need to supply to that application, or whether it's the service assurance that require that additional metrics, all of that can be in terms of lifecycle management, centralized, and then from that centralization point, distributed to the various endpoints. Security is top of mind. Obviously, we need to provide a very strong security stance we're talking here mobility network. We don't want that to be compromised, obviously. So we have capabilities to help as well. And these capabilities are enabled on our ARM-based environment. The goal here is really to assess at every point in time, a build time for developers, um, run times for operations, 
what is the security stance and how or what are the measures you should take whenever there is something that has been identified. And the last component, I'll skip quick over it. This is really like the ability to provide containerized application all across your environment. So you need that registry. All right, so that was the quick overview of the work that we've been doing, ARM and Red Hat together with other partners to provide 5G on ARM. Stay tuned as we finalize our deployment and our lab environment with all the elements in the platform that I just discussed. And feel free to reach out either to your ARM team or to your Red Hat team. Please reach out to us. We're eager to understand what are your use cases, your challenges, and help you throughout achieving them. Thank you very much.